Shiny hunting takes many different forms. Shiny hunters hunt in many different ways, and and in the words of renowned shiny in the words of renowned shiny hunter Absol Blog's Pokemon, shiny hunting is shiny hunting is a very personal journey. Now, the way you choose to go about it is, oh my god, fine. I'm not someone who shiny hunts very regularly, but what I am is the Pokemon math guy. You annoy shiny hunters? Stupid, uh, but not necessarily my business. But you use wrong or poorly constructed math arguments to spread misinformation online or make stupid claims? Now it's personal. Today, I'm gonna settle an argument once and for all that's been raging in the Pokemon community for years. Buckle up, gamers. I'm a drama YouTuber now. Except, uh, not at all. Are multi-game hunts method hunts? That's the question that has sparked a lot of debate over the years, not just amongst shiny hunters, but also between shiny hunters and shiny hunting content consumers. To answer this question properly and definitively, we need to understand what it really means. Also, before we get started, I just wanna give an extra special thank you to Absol for answering a lot of my questions about shiny hunting while I was researching for this video, and also giving some historical context about method hunts. Thank you, Absol. First of all, what is a method hunt? Well, method hunting basically means that you're using some kind of in-game mechanic as a method to increase the odds of finding a shiny. For instance, the Masuda method. This is probably the most well-known method and also the namesake behind using the word method in this context. Basically, by breeding together two Pokemon from two different language copies of the game, like a Japanese Ditto and an English Agron, you have a higher chance of getting a shiny from the resulting egg. Another example of a popular method hunt would be radar hunting from Generation 4. Basically, as your radar chain increases, your shiny odds improve. But in both of these contexts, and in the context of any method, you increase the odds from so-called full odds, or base odds, to something more favorable. And again, for any method hunt, you are using pre-existing in-game mechanics. Now, multi-game hunting is exactly what it sounds like. You're just playing on several copies of the game simultaneously. This is an out-of-game change. It doesn't affect the way the game plays, it's not an in-game mechanic, it doesn't change the odds, it's just playing several games at the same time. Now, multi-game hunting has been done pretty much since the dawn of shiny hunting. It's not a new thing, but it has become more common in recent years as people get access to more copies of the games over time. Maintenant, imaginez on... Attends. Pourquoi est-ce que je parle en français? Est-ce que ça fait partie du segment sponsorisé? Oh, uh, apparemment, je n'ai pas besoin de parler français pour ce segment, uh, mais c'est juste comme ça que je l'ai écrit pour qu'il semble plus intégré. C ça marche? Est-ce que ça a fond son? Monthly est une application d'apprentissage des langues avec plus de 125 millions d'utilisateurs dans le monde. Les corps et les supports audio sont enregistrés avec des locuteurs natifs pour garantir l'authenticité. Mondly propose des leçons pour de nombreuses langues différentes et se concentre sur des leçons pratiques que vous pouvez utiliser dans la vie de tous les jours. Oh, euh, apparemment, je suis censé faire cette ligne suivante en anglais, euh, sinon je ne terminerai pas le contrat. Mondly is hosting a sale right now with a 96% discount for lifetime access to all languages. You can access the sale by going to mondly.app slash adef. Was this a good bit? Now, a lot of people who come across multi-game hunting for the first time, either as a viewer on Twitch or just stumbling across a shiny hunting video on YouTube, often have the same first question. Is multi-game hunting not a method hunt? I think the question is actually pretty reasonable. To a first-time observer, it certainly seems like people hunting on multiple games should find the shiny sooner, right? It feels like their odds are better. I mean, somebody hunting on 10 copies of the game usually finds the shiny faster than somebody just hunting on one, right? Something I've said a lot in my videos is that nobody understands probability. Not really. It's a very difficult subject to understand. Probability is super counterintuitive. To me, at least, I think it's understandable for a first-time observer to think that multi-game hunting might increase your odds of finding a shiny, but it doesn't. Let me say that even more plainly. Multi-game hunting is not a method hunt. 
Let's take a look at the math and I'll show you exactly why. A common argument I see is people like to say that like method hunting, shouldn't multi-game hunting increase your odds by a discrete amount? Like for example, if I'm playing on Pokemon Fire Red, if I shiny hunt there, my odds are one in 8,192 to find a shiny on any given encounter. But if I hook up a second copy of the game and now I'm playing on two copies of Fire Red, shouldn't my odds add together and now my shiny odds are two in 8,192? Well, not exactly, but let's assume that that argument is true. A really good way to see if a mathematical argument holds up is to take the small version of the problem or argument and then scale it up to the extrema and see how it behaves. Let's imagine a fictional millionaire out there somewhere with truly no better way to spend their money other than buying thousands of copies of Pokemon Fire Red and thousands of Game Boy Advances. Now imagine that they get their hands on 8,192 of them. Are their odds now added together to be 8,192 over 8,192? 100% odds to find a shiny on any given encounter? No, obviously not. All of the games are completely independent of one another. They have no influence on one another. You're not guaranteed a shiny on every encounter just because you have too much money, way too much free time, and really bad decision making. Each game is still independently one in 8,192 odds. Like I said in my shiny hunting probability video, which explains a lot of the things I'm gonna say in this video in way more detail, by the way, you can't just add probabilities together that are independent like this. What if our fictitious millionaire had 10,000 copies of the game? Would their odds now be 10,000 out of 8,192? Over 100% chance to find a shiny on any given encounter? That makes genuinely no sense. Hopefully now you can see how taking our problem to the extreme has has already answered the question for us. But suppose you're not satisfied with that answer. After all, somebody playing on 10 copies of the game will most likely find a shiny faster than someone hunting on only one game. And that's true. It's not definitively going to play out that way every time, probability is very fickle, but to truly understand what's actually going on, we need to look at the encounter number. When someone is hunting on, say, four games at once, and they generate four encounters between the games at the same time, they increase their encounter number by four, not one. Multi-game hunting doesn't increase your odds, it just increases the speed at which you see encounters. If you're not cool with that, then you probably need to ask yourself if the number you care about more is how many encounters it takes to find a shiny or how many hours it takes. Given how every single shiny hunting YouTube video ever states the encounter number as the most important thing, I think we have our answer. When you're method hunting, like with the shiny charm, for example, if the shiny charm increases your odds from one in 8,192 to say, three in 8,192, effectively tripling your odds, the game is, in essence, performing three rolls on the Pokemon to check for shininess as an encounter is generated. But you don't see those three rolls take place. They happen within the game and they are not independent of one another. There is an in-game function performing that check. And then when the encounter is finally generated and the Pokemon is shown to the player, the shiny hunter increases their counter by one, not three because the game only generated one encounter, but their odds of finding the shiny were better. To show you precisely the difference between method and multi-game hunts, I'm gonna use one of my favorite probability tools, a probability space. A probability space is basically where you represent all of the possible outcomes of a situation in some kind of physical space. So for example, let's imagine a dartboard. The bullseye of our dartboard will represent a shiny encounter. Obviously, that's what we're aiming for. All the rest of the space on the dartboard, then, is a non-shiny encounter. Now, you throw darts, which is the same thing as running into a wild encounter. The area of the bullseye makes up exactly 1 8192nd of the total surface area of the dartboard. If you throw your darts completely randomly, you'll hit the bullseye with a probability of 1 in 8192. A method hunt increases the size of the bullseye. A multi-game hunt just increases the speed at which you can throw the darts. You're still aiming at the tiny, full odds bullseye, you're just faster at throwing the darts now. Let me say that again so that it really sticks into your brain. Method hunts increase the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon on any given encounter. Multi-game hunts just give you more opportunities in a shorter amount of time, but the odds are unchanged. 
Hopefully now you can see why these two things are different and why shiny hunters are pretty tired of answering this question by now. Ideally, this video can now serve as a mathematical resource from here until the end of time for anybody who ever has a question about this particular topic. Together with my other shiny hunting probability video, I hope that the math of this very popular niche of the Pokemon community can finally be better understood. Something I want to stress though is that doing a method hunt or doing a multi-game hunt doesn't make you any less of a shiny hunter. You can hunt however you want, whether it's on 40 games or one, or with the shiny charm or without, hell, even if the Pokemon was RNG manipulated, so long as you're forthright and honest with people about how you got the shiny Pokemon, do whatever you want. Who cares? Have fun. This is all a super arbitrary thing we've decided to care about within a video game anyway. The shiny hunting community is full of delightful folks who just want people to experience fun journeys and adventures through shiny hunting just like they have. But how you do that doesn't matter and is completely up to you. I asked Absol what shiny hunting meant to him and why it's important, and I'm gonna let him answer that in his own voice. Shiny hunting to me is the ultimate background activity and I think it's a very personal journey. Everyone values their shinies in different ways. And for some people, the shiny Pokemon itself is the end goal. And for others like me, it's the journey to get there. I personally believe that the data for shiny Pokemon on its own is objectively worthless, because even since the dawn of Pokemon time, it's always been possible to carefully hack in any Pokemon that you want and make it look reasonably real enough. What I'm deeply enamored with instead is the journey to achieve that data. I love watching all the ways that people take it on, whether they use some method to chain for it, get it in just five minutes in Pokemon Go on Community Day, hunt it full odds whether they're using one console or 50, or even carefully manipulating the RNG to land on the perfect shiny frame. What I love are the stories that can be told through that. The unbelievable twists and turns or the crazy circumstances under which shinies show up. There's no shiny hunting leaderboard. There's no big grand prize at the end of this for anybody. Shiny hunting is an individual journey that you embark on for yourself and no one else. That's it. At the end of the day, genuinely, who cares if multi-game hunting is a method hunt or not? To be clear, it's not. But you should just hunt the way you want to and let other people hunt the way they want to. And stop trying to invalidate their success and happiness just because you had to walk uphill to school both ways. Shiny hunting is for everybody, no matter how they do it. Thanks for watching.